not taken over by any evil entities and or my manipulating life forms. Why do you ask? I don't know. You're just not making as many long-winded speeches as usual. We're just making sure that you don't stumble across anything. I mean, don't stumble across anything. I mean, segue into another conversation. Well done. Well, let's wrap up Matrix Month by taking a look at what many consider the worst of the Matrix trilogy, Matrix Revolution. Let's. While Matrix Reloaded had a strong opening at the box office, the audience reaction was less than thrilled. Both diehard fans and common moviegoers didn't seem too excited to see where the story was going anymore. Hence, very few people saw the final installment, and it bombed at the box office. I know, right? Hard to believe a film series would deteriorate into explanatory dialogue and lifeless performances after the mountain of emotion the first film gave us. But, nevertheless, let's see how a franchise that hooked in so many people so quickly could lose them almost as fast. So, let's take a look at... Oh, something's on my foot. <sighs> Motivation and emotion? You too can figure out even the most basic of human emotions by reading this book. <laughs> Who would need help figuring out the most basic of human emotions and read a book to understand Yes! This? this is Matrix Revolutions. We start right where we left off, with Tom in a coma right next to Agent Smith impersonating a knocked out crew member. Any change? No, I still have the same expression no matter what. They're told, however, that the Oracle has important information for them. Who are you? I'm the Oracle. I made a choice, and that choice cost me more than I wanted it to. One thing I've learned in all my years is that nothing ever works out just the way you want it to. Like sometimes an actress dies in between films and you have to Dumbledore the shit out of it. What choice? To help you, to guide Neil. And if you're wondering what important words she has to share with them, apparently it's only two. I know this because it's the exact same two fucking words that everybody in this movie is brainwashed to repeat. No, really, for all their rambling and long-winded speeches, count how many times they just keep coming back to the exact same two words. Choice. Purpose. 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 They even force them into sentences no normal person would ever use them in. All right, let's move with a purpose. Who talks like that? Seriously, has anyone ever used the phrase, let's move with purpose? And not gotten a wedgie in high school? But for some strange reason, Tom is in a realm apparently in between the machine world and reality. Are you from the Matrix? Yes. No. I mean, I was. <gasps> Wait a minute. Mobile, I think, just may be an anagram for Limbo. <gasps> They're trying to tell us that this world is Limbo! Oh! Oh my god, is that clever! I mean, say what you will about Citizen Kane's marriage and their visual symbolism of growing the table further and further apart over the years, not only suggesting through visual means that they're growing further and further apart from each other. This! This just has to move two letters around and boom! It's the genius! Oh my god, these writers are incredible! How do they come up with this? Have they said purpose and choice yet? Purpose, choice. There you go, the movie felt naked for a second. Well, thank God the rest of the film isn't as straightforward and doesn't ramble on. Oh yeah, it does. I just have never heard a program speak of love. It is a human emotion. No, it is a word. What matters is the connection the word implies. Can you tell me what you would give to hold on to that connection? Wow, this is about as exciting as actually waiting at a real train stop. You believe in karma? Karma is a word, like love. A way of saying what I am here to do. Yeah, we're here for a while, guys. I hope you're enjoying it. Your programs. Oh, yes. And yet somehow, like most of the machines in this movie, I seem to have much more emotion than any of the human characters. My wife is an interactive software programmer. She is highly creative. What are you doing here? Goodness, I apologize. My wife can be very direct. Yes! Please! More of that! You're the first one to say something that isn't 20 pages long! I see that you are in love. Aw, oh, what gave it away? Was it how I stare into nothingness with no recognizable thought? Cause that's kinda how I normally am, huh? <laughs> but a character called the Train Man comes to take them away, leaving Tom behind. You're gonna stay right here until the Maravintian says different. I don't wanna hurt you. Don't your eye make threats. I don't need this, I made it beyond Thunderdome. Get on the train or you stay here with him. The 
because Tom realizes as much energy as he puts into it, he ends up going nowhere. You can personally insert your own obvious metaphor for the movie here, but me, I just want to get the fuck out of this scene! This leads us to one of Frenchie's clubs, which is, imagine, a fetish club. You do know people wear other clothes in the real world, right? God, I'm kidding. You must be ready to die. Ha ha! Hey! They partake in a slow-mo gunfight because... Really, I don't think the films have explored that avenue enough. And they break inside to see the Frenchman. The prodigal child returns. We only want to talk. Of course you do! That's all anybody wants to fucking do in this movie! You must have something. I won't. Frenchie offers to make a deal that if they hand over the eyes of the Oracle, he'll give them back Tom. It seems a perfectly fair and reasonable deal to me. But... Because these films love plot threads that don't go anywhere, they say, Fuck that shit, we're just gonna point a gun at you. I guess that works. Oh, darling, let's not say anything and just suck face. How's it any different from what we normally do? So, because you found the first boring oracle talk in the boring oracle room, so not boring, here's another boring oracle talk in the boring oracle room that you will definitely find boring. I think it's time for me to know a few more things. So do I. And I'm not gonna lie, watching a scene where Tom does nothing but constantly ask questions is like watching a conversation in a Buttons and Mindy cartoon. Where is this going? I don't know. You don't know or you won't tell me? No one can see beyond a choice they don't understand. What choice? It doesn't matter. Why? Because it wasn't time for you to know. Why? The power of the one extends beyond this world. Why? It reaches from here all the way back to where it came from. Why? You are a bastard. Speaking of which, after Tom leaves, Smith only ends up taking over more and more people and corners the Oracle in her kitchen. I suppose you've been expecting me, right? Oh, I hate chocolate chip! Maybe you knew I was gonna do that. Maybe you didn't. What did you do but sorry? Cookies need love, like everything does. <laughs> <laughs> okay, this film might have been worth the price of admittance just to hear Hugo Weaving say that line. Cookies need love like everything does. Actually, I think every Hugo Weaving movie needs that line. Beneath this mask there is an idea, Mr. Creedy, and cookies need love like everything does. Megatron Prime! Cookies need love like everything does. They deserve to choose for themselves. The end has come. It will not be our end, but his. Cookies need love like everything does. Coming out of him, it just sounds magical. But he ends up taking over the Oracle, which leads to one of the silliest and most famously goofy laughs in movie history. <laughs> I am not entirely convinced that they didn't replace him with a Hugo Weaving style Muppet. No, really, I think he fit in pretty well in that crowd with that face. It's time to play the music. It's time to light the light. It's time to meet the Muppet on the Muppet Show tonight. But Tom believes he has to go into the heart of the machine's home world to confront them and needs to take one of their ships to do it. Is this what the Oracle has told you? No. This is asinine. If you want to kill yourself, go do it. But do it without wasting one of our ships. He can take mine. For Christ's sake, Niobe. I'll pilot this ship. He can take mine. After all, he is the exact reason why we're in this god-awful predicament. I think he's done more than enough to earn our phenomenally misguided trust. But Tom and Trinity's ship has a stove. The most menacing Hugo Weaving impression known to man. It might appear that way to you, but Mr. Anderson and I know that appearances can be deceiving. That is a damn good impression, but can he fit his entire fist in his mouth while he's laughing? <laughs> <laughs> Tom surrenders his gun to save Trinity, resulting in Agent Kinda Smith burning his eyes off. I wish you could see yourself, Mr. Anderson. Marco! Marco! 
Oh, come on, it's the law. You have to say Polo. But because we haven't done the blind prophet cliche yet, it turns out now he can see. In flame vision <laughs> So I tried. But I think you're gonna have to drive. It's cool. I can make jokes, even though I should be in blood curling pain. Thank God my brain is so slow I constantly forget what's actually supposed to hurt me. Hey, speaking of things that are supposed to hurt me, you guys are awfully quiet over there. Oh, good. Finally, things can be less suspicious around here. Did you make things less suspicious around here? Yes, he is totally convinced that we haven't been affected by you. Good. Everything is going according to plan. <laughs> Silence. Only I may do the meme where they laugh. Sorry. It's okay. Zion is about to be wiped out by an army of machines. It's time to take off our shirts for no reason and get in our machines we stole from James Cameron's aliens who will ironically steal it back for Avatar. I think the real battle is between which film series is trying to be less original. And to think, this is all because our beloved messiah said, fuck it, I want to get laid more. You all can get axed off by Cthulhu sperm while I run away taking one of your ships that's essential to your survival. Best messiah ever. So I hope you like people shooting upward and shouting ah because there's exactly 20 minutes of it you get to watch. Yup, 20 minutes of this folks and all its visual wonder. Just look at all the palettes of color that they have on display. Like gray, dark gray, vomit gray, snot gray, stone reflecting off of dim fireplace gray. And all accompanied by flashing lights so constant that even a rave in a haunted house would get bored by it. But Morpheus's ship comes in with, for lack of a better term, a friggin' off switch. And finally stops the fighting. You did it. No. We did it. You're a hell of a pilot. No, we're a hell of a pilot. We really should stop this. No, we really should stop. Oh, yeah, sure. But it turns out, much like Tom, their ability to save the day ends up instead somehow fucking more people over. Did I miss something, Commander? I thought we just saved the duck. That EMP knocked out almost every piece of hardware in every APU. If I were the machines, I would send every Sentinel I had here right now. Save the duck, Captain, and just handed it to him on a silver platter. You know, the thought occurs to me we're not very good at what we do. But hey, at least we believed, right? No strategy, no reason, just all faith, believing. That's, that's a good lesson to take out of this, right? Good things for people to learn in the future. I'll just let myself. Meanwhile, Tom and Trandy continue to fly towards Skynet to try and make a deal. We're over the fields, aren't we? But they are eventually spotted after a pretty friggin' long time. However, Tom is able to zap most of them with his Jesus beans, but they eventually end up... ...punching his spirit? Which means they have to go higher up. Beautiful. Color! It's been so long since I've seen color! Oh well, back to the world of smoke-stained greens and urine cake blues. What a world of imagination we live in, huh? The ship crashes and Trinity, it seems, is somewhat inconvenient by the results. I can't go with you, Neo. I've gone as far as I can. What? Oh no. Uh, <laughs> I don't think she'd be quite so calm or coherent with those metal cords sticking out of her body. My guess is her dialogue would be a mix of gargling blood and... <laughs> Trinity. Trinity. You can't die. 
No, really, you can't die. You don't have the acting ability to do so. You brought me back once. But not this time. Wait, try to think of something the Oracle said. We've escaped this scenario with bullshit loopholes before. Well, good to know all the lives you let die in Zion resulted in the exact same outcome for Trinity's dead ass. But hey, I'm sure it was all part of the grand plan that was about as well planned out as the one in Signs. Seriously, fate doesn't think itself through. <laughs> While Tom mourns the loss of his partner in Bland, Zion gets ready to face the machine's second wave. Attention, Zion. Do not fear. This is only a drill. <laughs> That's a little machine humor there. <laughs> but seriously, you are all going to die. But before they can wipe them out, Tom approaches the leader of the machines, the time baby, and tries to make a truce with them. What do you want? <laughs> Am I the only one who wants to hear this come out of that thing's mouth? <laughs> Seeing how Smith has apparently infected all of the Matrix, including the machines and programs, Tom says he can get rid of him in exchange for leaving Zion alone. Why they can't just make another Matrix like they've done so many times in the past, I don't know, but let's just pretend this movie isn't very good at answering questions. And then pretend you're not pretending. Through the magic of tentacle hentai, he's thrown back into the Matrix where Smith has indeed taken over everything. Mr. Anderson, welcome back. We missed you. Now is the monsoon of our discontent. You like what I've done with the place? So, remember how crazy fun and over the top that fight was in the middle of the movies with a million Smiths all attacking at once? You might be asking yourself, how the hell are they gonna top that? Well, by reducing it down to just one, of course. Because yeah, even though they had a brilliant idea by having our hero fight just one villain as well as an entire army both at the same time and actually kind of an ingenious setup, they said, hey, let's just throw in the same slow-mo kung fu you've seen a million times mixed in with some Dragon Ball Z action you've seen a million times, except now it's mostly blocked by the rain, so it's even harder to make out what's going on. Guys, that's not upping the ante, that's taking away from the ante. Why would you do that? It's so bizarre why they thought this would equal a bigger climax than the last fight they had with the Smiths. Hell, it doesn't even add up. In the last film, he took on like a bajillion of them, fighting them off like they're deflating balloons. Why the fuck now can't he just do that to one of them? Watch this one. I'm gonna kill you. Oh no, I'm defeated. That was pretty easy. Why is he having such a hard time with this guy? Hell, even the video game had a better climax than this. A giant version of himself made out of the city. Okay, it was pretty fucking silly, but have you come to expect that from these films by now? At least it was something bigger and different. Why are we supposed to be impressed by this? Why indeed, Mr. Algecritic? Schmuck, I knew you infected those two. What's going on here? No, oh, it's very simple, really. I just want you to finish the review. What? Why? Because then maybe fans will at least check out the movie to see just how bad it is. Yes, the more you hate it, the more likely it is to gain viewership from when it tanked at the box office. Oh, fuck that shit. I'm not reviewing the rest of it then. No, I'm afraid you have to, Mr. Ultra Critic, for as you see, I've grown quite an army. Hello. What's the plan, schmuck? I mean, you know deep down these movies aren't very good. That's for him to know, and for you to review. <sighs> All right, but I'm gonna get to the bottom of this. If by bottom you mean die, then yes, yes you will. I don't think that technically makes sense. That's the Matrix in a nutshell, now go. <sighs> so after the Smiths tried to destroy Tom. I love you so much, buddy. Tom apparently seems invulnerable, again, not quite explained, he could still bleed and die in the other two movies, as Smith starts to question what the fuck he's even doing there. You were laying right there, just like that, and I, I, I stand here, right here, and I'm, I'm supposed to say something. Uh, I think Weaving just got drunk and is trying to remember what he was supposed to do in the script. What? What did I just say? I don't care how smashed I'm coming across. Nobody's gonna be in the theater to watch it anyway. But Tom finally lets him win and take over his body. 
Is it over? Shouldn't I know? Aren't you me and me you? And why am I such a crying pussy all of a sudden? Would a goofy laugh help? Ha 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 but Tom's spirit results in metaphorical overload as the two entities balance each other out, destroying one another. Actually, in all fairness, a pretty clever idea for a resolution. But Jesus, do we have to sit through so much of what we've already seen before? Couldn't the scene just be summed up in... Hello, I am Antivirus Neo. You have Smith malware. To delete it, press Woe for yes or Bogus for no. You have selected Woe. It'll result in all my boring characteristics being permanently deleted. You have selected, whoa, 37 times. Harsh. This, of course, results in the death of Tom in the real world. While that's going on, it looks like Zion is finally safe. Zion! Zion, it's over! It's over! The war is over! Thanks, random boy with no authority who we're just gonna choose to believe for some reason? So everything goes back to normal and the machines agree to free anyone who wakes up from the Matrix in the future. Well done, Mr. Alja Critic. And now it seems there's no purpose to your existence. That may be all well and good, but have you considered this? Hi, a gun! No blood. Wait a minute. I know what you guys are. You're. You're. The Strangers from Dark City! Very clever, yes. But why? Well, what are you we doing? We were so pissed off that our movie bombed earning only the slightest of a cult following. We knew we had to retell our story to a more popular market. So we dumbed it down for a broader demographic. Of course. A world controlled by emotionless entities. A lead who adapts to his powers. A dark environment ruled by human imposters secretly observing them. Hell, it even ends with two people flying around destroying a city. But it wasn't enough. So we replaced character development with gunfights. Vague undertones with obvious symbolism. And classic film noir with sexy people in tight outfits. It was a big hit, but something went wrong. The audiences caught on to our gimmicks and grew tired of the sequels. But you, Mr. Alja, you can say how bad it is and grow the audience's curiosity back. No, no, no. You know as well as I do, more attention should be brought to things that are timeless, not what's just popular for the moment. We've tried it before. We dare not try it again, nor will you. <gasps> Mr. McGrinnick, catch! Oof. Chester, I told you, I don't do anything beyond pot. No, no, insert it into your head! Oh, that makes much more sense. You're probably wondering why I keep appearing on all your memories. It's because I have inserted myself into them. For as you see, I have been studying the strangers for some time. Really? Eh, it's a hobby. But I have also discovered how to destroy them by using their very own power known as ruining. Ruining? The ability to ruin a perfectly good idea with unfit action and mindless puppets that they call characters that the viewers can imagine themselves as. But you can ruin too, critic! All you have to do is finish the review, but you must act. Now! Ah! The Matrix films are silly, but harmless. What? In the grand scheme of things, there are some good ideas, neat visuals, and clever analogies. There's much smarter ones out there, but at the same time, this did at least get the ball rolling for people to say, hey, action films can make you think, and can push the envelope of what was visually possible. Before it, action films didn't have to look like anything that special. Just people shooting guns, jumping through explosions, stuff like that. But now, every film has to have a visual style if it's going to be recognized at all in today's media. This means so many more options for creative imagery and inventive imagination. And let's give credit where credit's due, this is most likely because of The Matrix. Even if it's not the best, it did change a whole lot and deserves to be acknowledged for that. And let's be honest, every film, even the sequels, has something good in it. So on the whole, while I personally don't enjoy them, they did do more good than maybe I realized to begin with.
And none of them, not even the last one, are really god-awful. No, you must hate them. You must hate them so much the people have to see them. No, I don't. I think it's time to use some of this ruining power to get things back to normal. No more of the color green. No more weird-ass fetish gear. And no more stilted, unemotional acting. By God, you will have personality! No! Much better. I'm dying, Mr. Alger Critic. We researched so many popular stories, so many timeless philosophies, so many important sounding words. Why couldn't we make our characters more human? You want to know what makes a character human? Well, you're not going to find it in this went looking in the wrong place. <sighs> hey Malcolm, hey Tamara. What a beautiful, colorful day. Sure is. Hey, you guys are smiling. Why is that weird? I don't know, just haven't seen it in a while. Okay. Hey, did you guys want to go hang out at the mall? Why, so we can sit for hours discussing our purpose or role in life? No, just hang out and talk. Why, yes. Yes, I would. I spy with my little eye something beginning with M. Me. Yeah. Cookies need love like everything does.